everyone, it's Pam with Organizer AZ911. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, welcome. Thank you for clicking on this video. As I said, my name is Pam. I'm a professional organizer and I love sharing all my organizing tips, tricks, and strategies right here on my YouTube channel. Let's dive right in, shall we? In this video, I'm going to talk about two things that you can do that'll have the biggest impact on the tone of this holiday. And then I'll give you a whole bunch of easy, inexpensive, and fun ways to make this Halloween one of the best ever for your kids. So the ideas I'm gonna share with you are ones I actually used myself when my kids were little. Now I was a room mother for all three of my children in their schools. So I racked up about eight years of experience planning Halloween and Valentine's Day parties for their classes. Also, my kids had some pretty severe asthma issues when they were growing up. And often the weather in October in the Midwest would trigger some serious asthma attacks, which in turn meant that my kids had to stay indoors. And there were several Halloweens where they couldn't even go out trick-or-treating. So I had to figure out alternative ways to make Halloween equally fun for my kids when they couldn't join their friends trick-or-treating. Okay, so first there are two things that you'll need to do. Number one, let's talk child psychology, okay? Your child is gonna follow your lead when it comes to the expectations of Halloween for this year. If you go around saying Halloween's gonna be terrible, your kids are going to believe it's gonna be terrible. So if you can't go to the pumpkin patch this year or trick-or-treating has been canceled, don't focus on what you can't do. Start telling your kids that you're gonna make Halloween extra fun and extra special this year. Which leads me to number two. Just like with your kids with online schooling, you are going to have to get more involved and participate more with your kids this Halloween. Welcome to Parenting, the 2020 edition. Okay, so let's talk about the games and activities your kids can do instead of trick-or-treating this year. First, go ahead and purchase a whole bunch of your kids' favorite candies. You can tell your kids one benefit of not trick-or-treating is that they're guaranteed to actually get the candy they like. I mean, I remember coming home from trick-or-treating and going through my candy bag, having to toss out all the candy corn I got. That was like half my candy bag. Candy corn was so darn inexpensive, a lot of people gave it out every Halloween. So buy as much of your kids' favorite candy as you would guesstimate they would actually receive trick-or-treating. Because this Halloween, the 2020 edition, they have to win their candy. <laughs> so here are some inexpensive, easy to make game ideas to help challenge those young candy hunters on Halloween night. Number one is an oldie but goodie called Pin the Spider on the Web. Yes, it is played just like Pin the Tail on the Donkey. It just has a Halloween twist. The only items you need to make this game are one sheet of black poster board, one white chalk marker, one package of plastic spiders, and some mounting putty. You might also need some type of blindfold for this game. Using your white chalk marker, draw a spider web on the black poster board. Then to make the spiders stick to the web, just put a dab of mounting putty on the belly of the spider. The putty will help the spider stick to the poster board, but can still be easily removed when you're done. If you can't find any mounting putty, you might be able to substitute it with some painter's tape. So the child who gets his or her spider closest to the center of the web wins the game and wins three pieces of their favorite candy. The second place runner-up wins two pieces of candy and so on. Or you can award the candy any way you want. The next game is called Batty Buckets and it's played just like the old-fashioned Bozo Buckets. The supplies you'll need to make this game are three to six small plastic pails that you can find at the Dollar Tree store, Party City, or Walmart. You'll need some construction paper and a few bean bags. You can find all sorts of bean bags on Amazon that are actually fairly inexpensive. Or you can make the bean bags yourself using just a small piece of scrap fabric, about five inches by five inches in size, a little twine or yarn, and a bag or two of split peas. And what you do with those items is you just take about a small handful of the split peas and put it in the center 
of your little five by five piece of fabric. Then just kind of scoop it up and tie off the top really tight and you'll have a little makeshift bean bag that they can toss. But remember to tie it up very tight. You do not want split peas all over the place. Trust me, been there, done that. You can decorate the sides of the buckets like I did simply using construction paper and some printouts of bats that you can find on the internet. When your child gets the bean bag into the first bucket, he or she will win one piece of candy. Then two pieces of candy for the second bucket, three pieces of candy for the third bucket, and so on and so on. The older the children, the more buckets you can use to keep the game a little more challenging. The next game is mummy bowling. And it's just that, bowling. To make the bowling pins, just use 10 empty water bottles and some white party streamers. I actually found this idea on Pinterest years ago. You can put all sorts of cute faces on them, either by printing up funny eyes that you find online like I did, or you can simply draw your own faces on them. If you don't have a mini bowling ball, you can always purchase a small ball like this at Walmart for like a little over a dollar. Then just start having fun bowling. You can make it so that if your child gets a strike, they win 10 pieces of candy. Or you can award candy again any way you want. The choice is yours. Then there's the pumpkin pitch game. I made this game using a trifold presentation board and just had fun painting pumpkins on it. Then I used a razor blade to cut holes for the mouths on the pumpkins. I just reused the bean bags from the batty bucket game for this game. The rules of this game could be that if they could pitch two or three bean bags in a row through the holes, they could win more candy. Finally, another game kids really like is witchy ring toss. To make this game all you need is one piece of foam board, some black and yellow construction paper, a package of party hats, some black spray paint, and a few pipe cleaners. So basically I just cut out five large circles using the black construction paper, I cut out the buckle pieces using the yellow construction paper, then I spray painted the party hats black and glued them to the top of the circles. I made each ring out of two to three pipe cleaners twisted together. So those are five different games you can easily make that don't take a lot of time to make. They're very inexpensive, but are also a lot of fun for the kids. These games were a huge hit with my kids. So I decided to use these games at the Halloween parties at their schools, and the kids really enjoyed them. And they even got pretty competitive with them too. Now these aren't the only games you can play with your kids on Halloween. You can also bob for apples or set up a scavenger hunt around your home. You can use the same spiders you used for that pin the spider on the web game. You just have to hide all of those spiders in areas all over your home where the spiders are actually in plain sight, but not really obvious. Then you send your kids in search for those spiders. The one that comes back with the most spiders after 10 minutes wins the candy. Again, you can set any amount of candy that you want to award to them for these games. Or another activity you can do this Halloween night is bake and decorate Halloween cookies and cupcakes. Get out that frosting and have at it. Now if Halloween just happened to fall on a Friday or Saturday like this year, then after we finished playing all of those games and baking all of those cookies, it was movie night time! We would turn all the lights off in the house and pop a huge bowl of popcorn and we watch an age-appropriate scary movie. Okay, sometimes it wasn't that scary. Sometimes it was a movie like Harry Potter. So I guess what I'm trying to share here is just because Halloween's going to be a little different this year doesn't mean it has to be a bummer. Again, you set the tone and the narrative this Halloween. And trust me, your kids will follow. Honestly, my kids loved our alternative Halloween celebrations. Sometimes even more than traditional trick-or-treating. Actually, a few years ago on Halloween, my kids insisted on helping set up these types of games in our garage so that the neighborhood kids could enjoy trick-or-treating at our house. You might say that they added their own unique style to the games that night. So don't get down. There's a lot of fun to be had this Halloween, despite this pandemic. 
Okay, I hope you found the ideas I shared today helpful. If you did, please let me know by clicking that like button below. And while you're there, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you know the next time I'm uploading a new video. Have a happy and safe Halloween, everyone. See you next time. <gasps>